Hey guys, it's Madison Estes. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about plot bunnies and the various ways that I record my plot bunnies and story ideas. I say record and not organize because there is nothing organized about my process. Seriously, this is not an instructional video. I am literally asking you, how do I control my plot bunnies? Because I have no idea. So first things first, what is a plot bunny? A plot bunny is a term that comes from the fanfiction community that is used to describe a story idea that just won't go away. According to TVTropes.com, it comes from the notion that the idea will gnaw away at your brain until you finally write it, or from the fact that these story ideas tend to breed like rabbits. The last story that I wrote, Reap What You Sow, was a plot bunny. I actually have four other writing projects that I need to be working on right now because there are deadlines coming up in the next few months, but Reap What You Sow just wouldn't leave me alone until I wrote it. My advice for dealing with most plot bunnies is to just give in. If you know that the story is going to be short, just go ahead and write it and get it out of your system. And if you think that it's going to be a longer project, just brain dump all of the ideas that you have onto the page. If you have any ideas for certain scenes or you already have a scene written in your imagination, just go ahead and write the scene or the partial scene. Just get it onto the page so that you can go back to your current writing project. Some people say you shouldn't do this, that it will disrupt your current work in progress, or that if the idea is good enough that you'll remember it even after you're done with your current project, but that's BS. Most of us have really busy lives and are easily distracted, and odds are you're going to forget the story idea, or at least a part of it. So as soon as you get that idea, write it down. Just be aware of shiny new idea syndrome. This is a condition where a writer can't focus on their current project because they are obsessed with a shiny new idea. If writing a story is like being in a relationship, shiny new idea syndrome is the equivalent of having an emotional affair. So just brain dump those ideas onto a paper and then move on as quickly as possible and try to leave that story alone. You don't want to be the author that never finishes anything. So now I'm going to show you how I record my plot bunnies and all the other random ideas that just pop into my head. I warned you that my system is chaotic, so be prepared. Uh, and then I'm going to go over the notes for the story that I'm going to be working on next month during Camp NaNoWriMo, a bizarro novella called Blisters about a teenage boy that gets pregnant. And that is all I'm going to tell you about that story for now. So first things first, the main thing that I use to record my story ideas is my phone. It is the most convenient way that I record my ideas because I usually have my phone on me at all times. Um, I just open up MemoPad and I just brain dump whatever is in my head, which is a really bad habit because MemoPad, as far as I know, does not have a way to transfer the notes onto my computer. So they're just stuck on my phone and if something happens to my phone, I'm screwed. I've currently been trying to transcribe at least 10 of my notes into my computer every single day. But that's going to take forever because I have somehow accumulated over a thousand story ideas and random just bits of dialogue that pop into my head, random quotes. Um, sometimes it's a full-on story idea and an outline. Sometimes it's just like an aesthetic. If you decide that you want to start recording your ideas on your phone, which I highly recommend, I also highly recommend finding an app that allows you to easily transfer your ideas onto your computer. I know, I think Microsoft Word, there's Google Docs, there's a lot of apps. So don't be me, be smarter than me. Choose an app where you can easily back up your files. The second way that I record my plot bunnies, and this is very old school, but I have a notebook that I use specifically for recording my story ideas. I started this notebook, I think back in high school, though like my freshman year of college. So it's been around, it's been here for a while, and it's very old school, I know, and it's also really inconvenient because once I've actually written some of the stories on the page, I have like crossed them out and they look really ugly. So I end up rewriting the rest of the story ideas onto a new page, which is kind of good in some ways because, you know, I have to kind of decide whether or not the idea is good enough to even bother recording it again onto a new page. And sometimes I'll just realize I'm not that excited about an idea and I'll just let that plot bunny go so that it can hop along to somebody else to write the story. But in general, this is also just a really good way to record your ideas. I don't usually carry this around. So often what I'll do is I'll record it in my phone and then record it in here, even though I also like to, I've started recording it on my computer as well. And I'm hoping at some point I'm gonna get enough ideas written on my computer so that I can print it out and put it in a folder. That way I'll have yet another way to manage my plot bunnies because, you know, all of the ways that I have now just aren't enough. <laughs> 
So obviously I don't want to share all of my plot bunnies or like my favorites, but I'm just going to share a couple of random things that I've written on here so that you can kind of get an idea of what kind of things can inspire full on stories. So one thing I have written on here is death odor, the science of death odor. It's not really a story idea so much as it is something that I could use in a story that I think is really interesting that I haven't seen in a lot of other stories. I don't think I've ever seen this except maybe once on an episode of CSI. The only other time I've heard of it was during the Casey Anthony trial when trying to find a way to like scientifically categorize the smell of a corpse in order to make that scientific proof instead of just, you know, part of a cop's testimony. So that's just something that I think is really interesting that I want to incorporate into a story someday. So I wrote it down so that I don't forget. Another thing that I have written down in here is a psychic that can read a creepy doll's thoughts. So that I think can make a really interesting short story. It's not really a story in itself, it's just like a little seedling of an idea, but I think that that could be a really good starting point for a short story. So on the next page I have a story idea that was originally going to be a short story, but I have sort of mentally expanded this idea since then, just haven't updated my notebook yet. And this is actually going to be the first book in a series that I'm planning, so this is only like a small fragment of the full idea that I have. Um, and then right next to it is a, is a outline for a short story that I want to write. You know, novel idea right next to short story idea. It's a little chaotic. So just one more thing before I move on to some of the other places that I keep track of my story ideas. Um, this is sort of a story aesthetic. This is what I mean whenever I say a story aesthetic. Desperate housewives, but like a gang of murdering psychopaths perpetuating their middle-class lifestyle while committing organized crime. So kind of like Desperate Housewives meets Weeds, but with gangs. So that is sort of an aesthetic. It's not really a story, there's not really any characters, but it's just kind of a general idea of something that I think would be really fun to write. So this is actually notes for a cyber thriller that I'm working on. Um, this is something that I'm going to try to work on again in the second half of this year. Not something that I have a deadline for, but it is something that I really want to finish at least by the end of the year. So I have like sticky notes with just random thoughts, you know, like maybe they should suspect espionage. I'm not even 100% sure what that means, but I think once I go over the outline and get back into the story, it'll make sense. Hopefully. So yeah, I also have other things in here like he carries around a crowbar in his car and he uses it to break the glass. I do actually have an idea of what scene that that's referring to. I'm not sure why he has a crowbar, but I think that has something to do with him going to break into someone's house and then he just leaves the crowbar in his car and then it ends up being used to save his life later when he needs to break out of his car. So yeah, so again, um, and then this is sort of my my outline and I put little stickers next to the chapters that I've written or at least have a rough draft for. So, um, and then I have Lacey and Philip on here. Those are the two characters that, the viewpoint characters in the story. So I like to write down, you know, wh whose chapter is who so that I can make sure that I'm switching back and forth enough. Because there is nothing worse than when you're reading a story that has multiple points of view and you end up getting stuck in one character's head too long. And then whenever you finally switch to the other character, it's like, oh, okay then, we're back to this character now. Yeah, it's just kind of frustrating to me, so I decided to put Lacey and Philip's names next to which chapter, just to make sure that I'm changing perspectives often enough. And in this folder I have random short story ideas. These are stories that I have at least started, whereas my purple notebook is ideas that I have most, for the most part, I haven't even started. Those are just random ideas that are really useful to look at whenever I'm like on Horror Tree and I'm looking for like maybe a certain theme, like do I have any stories that require the internet, because I know that there's an internet submission call coming. You know, just whatever themes are coming up right now, that's really useful for like stories I haven't even worked on. But this is notes for some stories that I've started on. One of them is called Early Bird. I have like three or four pages of notes, which is useful because um, to keep them separate from the purple notebook because those, again, are just like little seedlings of a story and it's helpful to be able to look at a, a wide variety of ideas at once. 
again so that if I'm browsing for an idea for an upcoming anthology that I want to try to submit something to I have a bunch of ideas in one place whereas this is where I can really kind of go into more depth with some story ideas that I've already started. So plot twist my frog folder is actually empty right now. I don't even remember what I had in it. Right now I seem to be using it for notes for how I want to promote the upcoming Roadkill anthology that I'm going to be the editor for. So yeah, the frog folder actually didn't have any plot bunnies in it. So this is what I call my master list. This is basically just a notebook that has the name of all of the projects that I've ever worked on or that I plan on working on. It has the names for standalone novels that I plan to write and also the names for books that I'm planning in a series. It also has the names of short story collections that I plan on writing, as well as stories that I've already written, categorized into which short story collection that I think would be best for them based on theme. So I don't use this to record plot bunnies, but I do use this to record random ideas that pop into my head regarding my YouTube channel. I have a page in here that has little purple tabs that's books that I've read that I really want to review. So this is kind of like my booktube page. And this is my author tube page. This is basically just a list of topics that I want to go over at some point on my channel. So in order to show you the rest of my plot bunnies, we're actually going to have to leave my office because there's actually two places where I store plot bunnies in my bedroom. So now, as you can see, we are in my bedroom. This is my nightstand. My nightstand is where I keep some of my story ideas. This is another place where I store plot bunnies and random ideas. Um, I'm not sure if there's any logic to this. I think most of these are short story ideas, so I should probably transfer these into my purple notebook or into my computer at some point, but this is just one place where I store random ideas. I have another clear bag, which is basically just like the other Thing I just showed you. Yeah, this is just a bag of random story ideas that relate to longer projects that I'm not currently working on. This is a notebook that I am using to store ideas for short films because um, at some point I want to start making short films. Demon Hunter's story. This is something that I worked on when I was going through a really rough patch in my life. It was like the first time that I got serious about a writing project after going through a really bad phase. I don't actually know if I'm ever going to write the story as I had intended to write it because it kind of seemed like it was a little bit of a knockoff of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Of course, then again, there's been a lot of things that are basically just knockoffs of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which actually turned out to be pretty good. So I don't know if, again, if I'm going to write it exactly the way I had envisioned it, but I have a lot of like just really interesting dialogue in here that I might end up using for a different story that I'm working on that's kind of similar because they're hunting demons in this story, but it's like in a contemporary setting, whereas in my other story, it's in a different setting. So I might just use some of the things that I wrote in here for this other project. I don't know. Or I might someday write the story as I had intended it to be, but nonetheless, I just still have this notebook because I want to use some of the dialogue that's in here. So in this folder on the left side, I have blog ideas, poetry ideas. Mostly this is just stuff for my author tube channel. I think I started this before I started my separate notebook that's just for my author for my YouTube channel. So I'm probably going to end up transferring a lot of this into that notebook. And this is mostly short story ideas. So yeah, this is just a notebook full of notes that I need to transfer into other folders and notebooks. So lastly, I have this file folder that you guessed it, it's full of notes for longer projects that I am not currently working on. A few of them I'm thinking about just like completely getting rid of, like Nowhere Fast, which is a project that I started working on back whenever I was in high school. So yeah, this is just a place where I store story ideas. I haven't actually opened this in quite a few years, but at some point I would like to get this organized. This is my Paris chest. This is the last place where I store my story ideas. I don't open this very often. This is mostly story ideas that I haven't thought of in a while. So yeah, that Demon Hunters project I was telling you about, here's more notes of dialogue. Almost all of this is from that Demon Hunter story that I'm planning to kind of recycle for another story. Uh, this is mostly notes about like criminal processes and also story ideas for a crime series that I want to write at some point. Ah, oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh, I've had this notebook since I was in high school, at least a junior in high school, I specifically remember, because I have several story ideas that I was working on in high school, one of which I remember I was reading the story idea to one of my friends in class, and some guy behind me was like, that's a great story idea. So, um, yeah, and then writing exercises that I did, some of them I did back in middle school, actually, and then I copied them into this journal. So that's interesting, just story ideas, outlines, and uh, writing exercises. Now we have my last notebook. Unfortunately, there's not anything particularly special in this notebook, but there is one thing that's kind of interesting, and that's um, that I have a bunch of story notes for a story that I tentatively called Second Chance. I don't even remember that story, but as I'm reading all of these notes and, and things about it, it's kind of like Hunger Games, but with a prison, and it's based off of a dream that I had years ago. So it's kind of interesting how I don't even remember the story that well until I read all the notes, but I remember where I got the idea from. I just thought that was interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to show you all of the notes that I've recorded for the project I'm going to be working on next month. So this is my surprises sheet. I probably shouldn't really be showing you guys this, so I'm going to keep it far back here and hopefully you can't see it. But basically what I've decided to start doing for all of my projects, especially my longer projects, is to write down all of the things that I think are either plot twists or, or at least advancements in the story that I don't think that my reader would have saw coming. The reason that I do this is because whenever I've been working on a project for a while, I start to get overly familiar with it and then I start feeling like, oh, the reader's totally going to see this coming. Even though usually most of the time the reader doesn't see it coming because it's a pretty surprising twist and it usually surprises me whenever I'm outlining or whenever I'm writing. But again, sometimes you just get so overly familiar with a storyline that it just feels like predictable whenever it's not. So something that I've decided to start doing is to just write down those things that I think are surprises as soon as I think of them so that I don't forget later on that this is something that surprised me at one point and will probably surprise the reader as well. So yeah, these three index cards really aren't anything important. It's basically just random thoughts. So this one is just a first line in the story that I don't think I'm actually going to use. It says, when Tyler was 12, he burned himself cooking bacon and got a thumb blister that lasted for a week. So I don't think I'm actually going to use that. The next line is what makes it interesting. 20 years later, he burned his abdomen and got a blister baby. So I don't know if I'm going to keep that or not. We'll see. So I hope that you learned something from this video. Namely, if you're going to use your phone to store your story ideas, make sure that you use an app where you can back up your ideas to the cloud or easily transfer them to your computer so you don't have to do it manually. If you didn't learn anything from this video, I hope that you at least enjoyed watching me go through all of the places and various notebooks and ways that I store my ideas. Maybe it made you feel better about your own organizational process. Kind of like whenever you watch an episode of Hoarders and then you look around and you think, hey, my house is a lot cleaner than I thought it was. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Soon I'll be posting videos on bizarro fiction and survival horror. Thanks so much for watching. Have a happy Easter and I'll see you later.